Well, Tim Gaither has a kind of humor that can be enjoyed by people from all walks of life, from Vegas to mm -hmm. the troops overseas, mm -hmm. the comedy clubs in, in his native Midwest. Absolutely. He's also described as a heckler's Ooh. nightmare. Mm. Tim's at our favorite club this weekend, the Funny Bone in Village Point. He is. He's here with us this morning first. So, uh, Tim, yes. good to see you. Good to see you guys. It's Thanks been a while me. since you've been here. Wasn't it about back. a year ago? About a year, I think. Yeah. About a year. I come I back about it. once a year. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what have you been up to? What's new with you? Uh, I've been traveling a lot this summer. Uh, I got married last September. Yeah, congrats. So, uh, congrats. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, married since we saw you last. Yeah, it's been almost a year now. I can't believe it's been that long, but yeah. Time's a flying, isn't it? Does it does go Does that fast. change your act a little bit? Uh, You've learned a lot in the past year. I I'm sure you have, Tim. <laughs> Marriage adds a whole new dimension to, to you life. You know, I, I think I got lucky, man, because I hear that all the time, but nothing's really changed. Nothing? Not, yeah. not How yet. Long have you been we don't have any kids How yet, though, either. Um, we lived together for a few years before we yeah. got married. Well, so, so you know her pretty well. Yeah, yeah. so that, that helped. But well, are you going to have kids? I'd like to. That does add a whole other sure twist. Kidding. You probably got asked that right away, right? As yeah. soon as you're married, so when are you guys having kids? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. everyone wants to have them, and I do want to have one. It took me a long time to come to that conclusion. You do have want to have one, is what you said. Yeah. I do have want to have one. I want to have one good one. <laughs> a good one. <laughs> Keep it, yeah. Yes. That's we, all I really want. That's, we, that's all we all want, is just one good one. Yeah, and, and, and I know that I would love a daughter. I just don't know that my heart could take it. I really don't. With, <laughs> with all the stupid things that people say and... Right. Just in general, I think yeah. I would just be like on patrol no, all the time. I, you know, I felt that same way too. And I always wanted boys. I had I had a boy, and then I, we got pregnant with a girl. And I'm like, oh, how am I going to handle this? Right. But it, it's it's just as special. It's mm -hmm. it's great. Wait but, till she gets. Oh, to I high know school. it would be great. And <laughs> yeah. I know I would love her to pieces. It's yeah. just that I I just genuinely don't know that I could take it. Like to handle all the things that come along just, with it. Yeah. yeah, just the mainly the stuff that comes out of people's mouths. You know? <laughs> right. right. No, yeah. I hear you. Like hecklers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Now you were here a year ago. We've mentioned that. Remind the, our viewers how you got started in comedy. Um, well, you mean the first when I was a kid? Yeah, I want to hear that story. Um, I was five years old, and we went to church, and it was a Southern Baptist church, and uh, they they always had the kids come up to the front of the of the congregation, and they would talk to them. And one of the preachers was like, "What do you think, kids? What do you think hell will be like?" You know, it's a great question to ask yeah. a bunch of five-year-olds. But um, <laughs> the week before, my dad had taken me to, we'd gone to like Walmart or J.C. Penney or somewhere, and I made him pick me up because the parking lot was so hot because I had bare feet. And I was like, preacher, hell be harder than the J.C. Penney parking lot on the 4th of July. <laughs> on the 4th of July. Yeah, and everybody started laughing, and I would just love that feeling. <laughs> yeah. And so then every week when we, when we went up there, I would try to make the congregation laugh. And sometimes I would, uh -huh. and sometimes I wouldn't. But I love it was kind of good, good sometimes. training for it. My poor mom just wanted to crawl underneath the pew every time I went up there because she never knew what the heck I was going to yeah. say. And, oh, that's yeah. funny. How do you, we were talking about this earlier. How do you, why are you a heckler's nightmare? Um, <laughs> Where'd that come I'm not from? sure who wrote that exactly, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I am pretty good with hecklers. But mainly, it's because it, when I first started out, you know, if someone was heckling or something, and you got in that situation. As a comic starting out, you think like everyone's looking at me, and I've got to say something, you know, witty or whatever. Yeah. Well, it didn't take me very long to realize that people who heckle generally aren't that smart. <laughs> you know, people who go and, and like try yeah. to yeah. try to disrupt the show or holler out or whatever, they're not that. People, smart people don't generally do that. <laughs> so it's, if you give them enough rope, they'll hang themselves, you yeah. know? Or like I'll ask them, I'll be like, what was that? You know, and usually I heard them. I know exactly yeah. what they said. But by the time they've repeated themselves, then I have my answer for them, yeah. you mm -hmm. know? Um, so that's a little, a little trick of it, yeah. you know? But it, mainly it, realizing that they're not generally very Is there smart. a difference? When, you, cause when I go to the, some of the comedy clubs and I hear people like calling out to the comics on stage, maybe they're not heckling, but they're trying to... Be funny in the that regard. The worst heckler to... is someone who agrees with you constantly, mm. <laughs> and, and you can hear them. Like if they're in the front, and they're like, "That is true." Oh my <laughs> gosh! Do you yeah, remember when that happened that. to Billy? You know, and that kind of stuff. And you can hear them having this conversation, yeah. and they're not trying to ruin your show. Yeah. They're just, or they'll like, I pause a lot, you know, just like strategically, and they'll uh, they'll they'll think they need to throw in up their own punchline. Uh. So I've got a line where I'll say, sir, this is, if I pause, it's strategic. It's not because I need your help. Yeah. You know, yeah. and they usually shut they up after that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's so distracting when you're up there. And it can be, it but can it's just be, part yeah. of it, you know. Now, I read that you have no specific audience. You kind of appeal to everyone. And why do you think you appeal to all different kinds of people? Um, 
I don't know. I, can't, I guess because I grew up around a lot of different people. I had a lot of different kind of friends, and we moved a lot. We got evicted a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> oh, yeah. We got evicted oh, yeah. a lot. Um, I don't know how many times I came home and saw that uh, notice, notice on the door. Yeah. 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 No. You got 30 days before the sheriff moves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you've got like 24 hours to right. the sheriff, yeah. you know. Well, you laugh about it now, but at the lawn. time it probably wasn't Scary, that funny. Yeah. I mean, no, it wasn't funny, but yeah. it was just kind of uh, kind of our normal life. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's why I think I, I just grew up around a lot of different people right. And, right. and a lot of different situations. You know, I was yeah, always but, a new kid. Yeah, but you're from the Midwest. Do you, you, I mean, do you relate to the Midwest audiences or have you been in the business long enough that when you go to L.A. or New York? Are you Hollywood now? Yeah, you Hollywood. Are you Hollywood? Are you, <laughs> no, I'm still very much uh, Midwest. Um, well, you seem like it, like a, a down to earth. <laughs> yeah, and I, I really enjoy going back on the road and, and Hollywood's fine and L.A.'s okay. And in California, the weather's great. I, I tell people all the time the the traffic is enough reason to move and the weather's enough reason mm -hmm. to move there, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, so I it all kind of, it all kind of balances years, out. I, I, hear yeah. I try not to leave between three and seven. Yeah, you, you don't, know? you don't want to go. And I don't have a day job, so I don't have to do that. But people that do mm -hmm. do that every That's morning tough. and every night, mm -hmm. they are heroes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> In LA, I'm just like, I don't know how people don't have a the falling four down hour moment. Rush hour. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's disastrous out there. Now, before we let you go, I want to talk about your YouTube hidden camera series. Okay. What's that all about? Um, I do some uh, uh, prank videos that uh, we put on YouTube. It's called Inappropriate, and it's mainly just hidden camera stuff. Mm -hmm. I did one not too long ago where I pretended I was uh, I had been drinking and I was trying to get a test drive. It was just water in a in a, in a paper <laughs> right. bag, but I was you know acting like I was boozing and trying to yeah. get a get a guy to give me a test drive. That's do you have those linked to your uh, website? Can people find it's those? TimGatherComedy.com. Pretty much anything you want to find about me, you can find through there. All mm -hmm. my social media, um, YouTube, all that stuff. It's yeah. all there. And then he'll be at the Funny Bone this weekend, tonight and tomorrow. Two shows, both nights, 493-8036 is the Bone phone. Or just go to FunnyBoneOmaha.com. Tim, great to see you. Thank again. you. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Yeah. You bet. Well,